Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Getting back to work on the Cobra in this video after uh, taking a week off to do some Jeep things. I hope you enjoyed that video, it was a little bit different. Uh, just you know, went out wheeling with some friends, uh, had a pretty good time, so it was nice to you know, get out and have some, have some fun in that Jeep. So, uh, but now we're back to work on the Cobra. Uh, last Cobra video, started getting the engine torn down, heads are off, intakes off, all that fun stuff. Uh, so now it is time to start getting uh, onto prepping things for the trick flow cylinder head installation. So uh, what I'm going to do is get this camera turned around and get to work uh, or get started on the work that I need to do on the car. So first thing on the list uh, has to do with the timing pointer. And this car, you can kind of see it there, has an adjustable timing pointer. I've already done a couple videos on this um, where I was trying to get it set because when I got the car, the timing was way off. Um, and I realized things were marked wrong and whatnot, uh, and the pointer wasn't even adjusted correctly. So I've gone through a couple of times with, you know, just kind of roughing it in based on, you know, what I could see and feel as far as valve placement and sticking a little wire down the uh, spark plug hole on cylinder number one. But now that I have the heads off, I can actually figure out top dead center by spinning it, get this, you know, number one piston set where it needs to be where top dead center is, and then I can set the marker officially where it's supposed to be at. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, um, double check the marks on the balancer, and then I can start messing with this, uh, spin the crank and get this thing where it needs to be, and then see where the pointer's pointing. All right, so you can see I cleaned some of the old paint off, and you can see where the zero is, and the line is marked. That is the top dead center mark on the balancer. So what I'm going to do is grab a wrench uh, on the front bolt, and I'm just going to go back and forth very slowly with my hand on the piston here and try and feel for, you know, where top dead center is. Keep in mind, there will be a slight amount of dwell, which is, you know, it'll kind of like stay at the very top as you're uh, rotating ever so slightly, just based on, you know, the rod having this spin over with the crankshaft. Uh, so just try and find the center of that dwell, and that is going to be the top dead center mark. And uh, when I have that, then I can go ahead and uh, adjust my timing pointer as required. So I'm gonna go ahead and mess around and see if I can find top dead center. All right, update time. So I went the full accuracy method and did put a dial gauge on the top of the piston, had it anchored in magnetic base. Uh, went back and forth very slowly and it started as far as the dwell goes. Um, it was basically between, movement was between negative four and positive four. So four degrees before and then it would stop and then four degrees after is when it would stop again. So I had it dead on, zero is center uh, of those two and that's where the marker is set. So um, yeah, right in the center of the dwell is uh, where I have the marker. So nothing needs to be changed there. I do have the, uh, the timing pointer in the right spot. So my timing is right. I've at least verified it uh, and can mark that off the list. So I'm pretty good as far as that goes. Um, on to the next. All right, next on the list that I wanted to do, and this is going to be just a kind of a quick uh, make me feel about, a little bit better about things, is checking valve lift, just because I want to see and try and confirm what cam this is. Um, this allegedly has an E303 cam in it, which in looking the numbers up on it, that should be 0 0.311 inches of lift, uh, which if you convert that to millimeters, because it's just that's easier for me to measure with what I've got here as far as measuring tools, it's basically 7.9 millimeters. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, measure the lifters uh, at the bottom, you know, when they're fully bottomed out, like you can see on that other bank, see what the height is there off of the machining mark. And then both lifters work through this uh, rotation, see what the max lift is on those, do the simple math, and uh, see where we end up. And that way I can confirm what cam I have. All right, here we are looking at the number one uh, lifters, uh, the intakes up right now all the way. I did go ahead, I did a base measurement. Both of them at the bottom were roughly six millimeters um, based on the roll I had. Uh, checked both of them and both of them equated to about 14 millimeters at max lift. So doing the math, that's a, you know eight millimeters. And again, they were just shy. So being that it's supposed to be 7.9 millimeters of lift for an ECAM, and they were both just shy of eight. Uh, based on my quick quick look, it looks like I can confirm that this engine does have an ECAM. 
Um, I'm pretty comfortable with that. And like I said, that's what I was told it had, but I just wanted to double check since I'm in here. Uh, so knowing that uh, Ecamm will work with the 1.6 rockers I have, um, it should be about 498 lift on both sides. So pretty good with that. Uh, that is off the list. Um, next thing I'm going to do is start getting things cleaned up as far as the decks and the uh, tops of the pistons on both sides and uh, go from there. All right, well, here is the driver's side after first pass of cleaning. Uh, what I did is took a really sharp razor blade, flat one, and uh, gently went over the deck to get off the uh, bits of graphite remaining from the uh, old head gaskets. So that's kind of the first step in cleaning the deck. And then as far as the pistons go, used um, the shop rags, the tub of towels, mechanics wipes that I always use. Uh, went over all the pistons. This one, which is the number, or the, this cylinder here, this is the one that was the dead cylinder uh, that had all that carbon buildup. This one came really clean, really easily, as you can see, because it hasn't been firing, it didn't have as much buildup, whereas everything else is still a little bit darker, but it did take a, a good amount off of those. Um, and then went down the bores, cleaned out any, you know, grit that had fallen in, you know, as I was cycling things up and down. And then I just went over and wiped some ATF on the uh, cylinder bores just to keep everything from rusting or anything like that. So uh, this side, that's the first step done. Uh, I also went ahead and scraped off the silicone that was on the uh, two uh, crossovers um, for the intake manifold because there was some buildup on there from uh, removing the intake. But anyway, um, that's the first step. I do have a nylon brush uh, drill attachment that I'll go over the deck to do a final cleaning on when the time comes. Uh, but right now I'm just trying to you know, get a start and get things looking a little bit better than they were. So that is the driver's side, stage one done. I'm going to get over to the passenger side and get that one done. All right, there we go. Uh, passenger side done. Same thing I did on the driver's side. Went over with razor blade, got the big chunks of graphite off that you can see on the ground all down there. And then uh, went with the uh, tub of towels, mechanics wipes, and you know, cleaned the deck off, cleaned the uh, tops of all the pistons off. Clean the bores out and put some ATF down the cylinder walls just to make sure nothing corrodes over time. Um, again, I will do a detailed clean on the, or a better clean on these with like a nylon brush on a drill and some uh, brake clean and whatnot uh, before I do the final install of the heads and gaskets. But I just wanted to get that junk off there because I do need to check piston to valve clearance and I didn't want uh, to have any of that existing material there or whatnot, just th uh, throwing things off. So uh, on to the next. And how good does that look? Uh, threw on one of the heads and just ran those two bolts down there on the number one cylinder. Uh, so I can do some testing and mock up for piston to valve clearance. Um, got a couple of ways that I'm gonna try and do this uh, that I just you know normally check things. So I'm gonna finish getting everything installed and I'll kind of walk through what I do and how I get everything checked and make sure that there are no issues. All right, and just did a little mock-up test fit to make sure everything will fit. These are the Scorpion rockers. All the studs are right, the plate's right, everything, you know, push rods are in place, the ones that I bought. So just wanted to make sure everything was gonna work with the heads and whatnot, because you never know with some of these aftermarket parts. So uh, everything looks good there. So yeah, next will be to check piston to valve clearance. So before I get into the actual uh, checking of the piston to valve clearance, I think I'm actually going to go through all the parts that I am installing on the car uh, in detail. That way that's over and done with. And then, you know, once everything's been explained, I can move on to doing the piston to valve clearance. Um, being that that's going to be more of a long process i will probably do that in the next video starting off and i'll end the video here with uh going through this stuff just because it's already you know, gotten a little bit long so uh first thing first is going to be trick flow heads um these are the 170 cc runner fastest cast heads um, and they are the ones with the dual valve springs so they are rated for a higher rev range um, the part number on the heads is Sorry, let me get the box real quick. Here we go. There it is right there. These are TFS 514-10004-M61. Uh, so again, these are the better springs and the 170 fastest cast. 
So I'm going to be doing these heads um, mixed with Scorpion Roller Rockers. Um, these are, that's the part number here. And these are 1.6 Endurance Rockers. Uh, so these are a little bit lighter weight than the uh, traditional ones, and they're rated for higher RPM, longer uh, longer revving. So I figured, you know, they're worth a little extra money to have something that'll hold up a little bit longer, and, you know, they're a good quality piece. Uh, so these are the rockers that are going in along with the heads. Next up are the push rods, and uh, these are the ones that I had, went ahead and ordered. These are the 675s. Um, with this swap, these heads on uh, this block, um, the two options that are normally used are the 675s or the 650s. Um, I've used these in the past with good luck. I'll double check and make sure it's kind of a 50-50 shot um, as far as what you end up needing for the proper wear pattern, proper uh, contact. So uh, once these are installed, I'll run it through, check for wear marks, make sure these are the right ones. Um, if not, I'll return them and get the um, 650s. But these are the push rods I'm going to try using to begin with. All right, the next are gaskets. Um, I got two of the Felpro high performance gaskets, uh, head gaskets. That's the part number there. Felpro intake gasket set. It's the 1250. That's the part number there. And then a pair of exhaust header gaskets, the 1415s. Uh, so those are the gaskets. Um, I also did have to order a couple extra Thermactor plugs for the heads um, because the heads will come with one, but you need uh, two per head if you're not using small lines, which I'm not using small lines on this car, obviously. So um, you will need to get an extra pair of these as well. So uh, those are all the ancillary parts uh, that I needed for this. All right, and back to the heads. Uh, so the reason I went with these heads, one aluminum wanted to lose the weight over the cast iron GT40P heads that were on the car. Two, these are the only heads with the large valves that will actually work with stock 5 liter Mustang pistons. Um, any other head, they have more of a traditional piston or a valve layout and you will run into clearance issues if you go to large valves unless you either notch the pistons or change the pistons. Um, I really have no intention of tearing the short block down and changing pistons. So these are the heads I went with. You know, I may have gone with AFRs if I felt like digging deeper, but uh, I've used these trick flows in the past. They've been really good. I mean, they flow well. They're, they're a good head for the money. And again, I don't have to dig into the short block and worry about notching pistons or um, swapping out pistons. I mean, that being said, you do have to stick with still a somewhat sane cam. Um, like I've used these in the past with the trick flow stage two cam and 1.6 roller rockers. So I'm pretty sure I'll be good with the e-cam, but again, next video I will check piston and valve clearance to be safe, make sure that there's enough clearance there. But you know, here you can see large valves, both intake and exhaust. And then just for comparison, here are the stock, or the, the GT40P heads, um, slightly smaller valves. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, combustion chamber size differences. I believe the P-head has a slightly higher compression, slightly smaller combustion chamber, but it also has a less flow, smaller pore size, and smaller valves. Um, you know, with the Victor Junior intake that I'm running, or I'm sorry, the Super Victor intake that comes with uh, the FI setup, I definitely wanted the larger ports for more airflow. All right, and the last thing I want to do is just show the weight comparison of the cast iron P heads versus the new aluminum heads. Uh, these are gonna be dressed you know, with the rocker arms and guide plates and stuff. I'll put those all on the aluminum head and this is the head as pulled off of the engine. Uh, so let me get this thing on the scale, get the weight on this and then I'll uh, get the aluminum one on. All right, so according to the scale is saying we are 54.2 pounds for the P head. All right, I got the aluminum head dressed up, so let's uh, see what that turns up to. All right, we got 33.6 showing for the aluminum head. And again, that is with rockers and all the guide plates. All right, so there you have it. Uh, the weight savings per head, 20.6 pounds. So between the two heads, that is 41.2 pounds that I'll be shaving off the nose of the car. 
not too bad. And, uh, you know, on top of it, I also am going to gain better flow uh, and heads that are much more flow matched and port matched to the uh, intake manifold that I have for the car with the uh, new EFI system. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Um, got a lot accomplished as far as, you know, doing some cleanup, uh, showing you some of the, you know, checks that I did as far as information I needed and wanted to know uh, before getting these heads installed and then kind of going through everything that's going to be installed in the car and uh, showing you some of the reasoning why I'm going to go through this. So uh, if you want to follow along, uh, next video will be uh, checking piston to valve clearance. Uh, probably final cleanup and then hopefully the installation of these heads on the block. Uh, so yeah, if you want to follow along, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Uh, should be a pretty good video next time getting these things installed. If you have any questions or comments, I'll leave them in the comment section below. I do read them and review them and I will reply. And that being said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.